Hi guys, it is just another dark, yuck, rainy, ugly, gray, bleh, depressing day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, where I'm on day six of this goddamn creeping crud that you don't want to get here on this gloomy Tuesday morning, December 19th, 2017. So, uh, I just wrapped up my, my, uh, end times headlines off today's mainstream media science pages here on my wacky conspiracy Tuesday, uh, search for stories and I think history might have been made today guys because the number one story the number one story on the mainstream media science pages is also the very same leadoff story for coast to coast AM uh, on the same morning you can open up coast to coast AM or the mainstream media science pages and find uh, several versions of this story which is all over the mainstream media since I believe it was the New York Times who first broke this story uh, a few days ago about this uh, about this uh, secret UFO research program uh, at the Pentagon, all sorts of versions of the uh, story. If you're if you're not familiar with the story, uh, just real quickly, this is as uh, good a story as any right here off of Yahoo News. The Pentagon ran a secretive five-year, a secretive five-year program to investigate UFO sightings. <clears throat> Spending 22 million dollars before it was shut down. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Due to cost, it has been revealed. For the first time, the Department of Defense has acknowledged the existence of the mysterious Advanced Aerospace Threat identification program uh, run from an office in a quiet corner of its sprawling headquarters and so the official story that the Defense Department is, is claiming uh, to the mainstream media such as the New York Times and everybody else is uh, the official story is that between 2007 and 2012, a team of researchers working with experts in Nevada probed reports of alien life forms and strange sightings over U.S. skies. Uh, and it was it was run by this fellow Robert Bigelow. I've had rants about this guy who was on 60 Minutes recently. This billionaire Robert Bigelow. He was all part of this. Uh, there you go. Uh, documents show how the unit working with a Las Vegas aerospace company run by Senator Harry Reid's longtime friend Robert Bigelow investigated sightings of aircraft moving at high speeds with no signs of propulsion or that hovered mysteriously. Um, Officials also studied videos of encounters between unknown objects and American military aircraft, which is one that they, they're they really uh, playing up, which I'll get to in a minute. Yet, in 2012, the secret program was seemingly 
seemingly wound up to the frustration of many. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. But some say the shadowy work continues. No shit, Sherlock. A former military intelligence official, Luis Elzi Elizondo, who led the unit, claims he continued his research and continued to work from his office in the Pentagon, Pentagon until October of this year when he resigned in protest at what he described as excessive secrecy and internal opposition. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, then according to this uh, story here he says UFOs have been repeatedly investigated over the decades in the US uh, going through this talking about Project Blue Book and all of the, and all of this other uh, shit is there anyone on this planet I don't care how non wacky you are if there if there's anyone who believes that the u s military has ever stopped investigating UFOs you can pull your head out of your ass the u s military uh has sure as shit been investigating UFOs every goddamn day since at least 1947 and probably before then and you can be sure that they are investigating UFOs as much today as they were 50 years ago of course the big question is what have they learned uh, Anyway, let's just look at a one, one of the uh, one of the major cases they're playing up. This video is all over YouTube. Just put in Navy pilot encounter with UFO. This is ABC News's uh, spin on this video, which is being played totally straight. <coughs> by the mainstream media, everyone from the New York Times to ABC News and all the way over there to Coast to Coast uh, AM, uh, just playing this story totally straight. Uh, so how is ABC News spinning this one? Um, retired Commander David Fravor spent 18 years as a Navy pilot, but nothing prepared him for what he witnessed during a routine training mission in 2004. Speaking to ABC News, um, retired Commander Fravor said, quote, I can tell you I think it was not from this world. I'm, I'm not crazy, haven't been drinking. It was, and after 18 years of flying, I've seen pretty much about everything that I can see in that realm, and this was nothing close. Um, and he's describing what appeared to be a 40-foot long wingless object that flew at incredible speeds in an erratic pattern. Uh, quote, I have never seen anything in my life, in my history of flying, that has the performance, the acceleration. Keep in mind, this thing had no wings. And then controllers on the Navy ship on the water below reported at the same time that he was seeing them in the air reported objects that were dropping out of the sky from 80,000 feet and then going straight back up. Uh, anyway, 
you can see the rather frustrating video of this. It's all over YouTube, as I say. And it, and it just kind of pisses me off. So this video was shot in 2004. And you would think by the year 2004 that uh, from the fucking U.S. Navy with all of their funding, we could get a little better, a little better photograph and video than, than these grainy ass little nebulous black and white videos that looks like something from 1947. I know goddamn well. Uh, the U.S. government has a hell of a lot better videos than this. It's just that the goddamn New York Times has not gotten their hands on it. Okay, let's see. Let's go over to uh, good old Newsweek. Looking at <coughs> the Pentagon secret UFO sightings. The strangest discoveries in the search for aliens. A secret Pentagon program investigating UFOs and evidence of alien life has been uncovered, revealing several sightings of peculiar aircraft by members of the U.S. military. Um, and it uh, goes through some of the some of uh, uh, the one I just talked about uh, certainly is one uh, one and another one over there in San Diego that they looked at and it and I guess that this uh, I guess that all of this is written up in some 490 page report which has not been released to the public uh, if I understand so I guess Newsweek actually has now come out this is the story that Newsweek came out just today quote we may not be alone former Pentagon UFO official says about evidence of alien life. A former military intelligence official who ran a Pentagon program in analyzing UFOs said Monday that there is, quote, compelling evidence that we may not be alone. Yes. Um, I love this. Speaking to CNN, L. Elizondo said, quote, My personal belief is that there is very compelling evidence that we may, ne may not be alone. Whatever that means. Exactly. Whatever that means. Uh, Elizondo, uh, although publicly... As I just said, the Pentagon is insisting that they shut down the program in 2012. Elizondo resigned only in October of this year. And the agency confirmed the existence of the program uh, only days ago. Um, Elizondo submitted a resignation letter to Defense Secretary James Mattis asking why the government refused to spend more time and effort on exploring signs of alien life. He publicly pushed for the release of multiple videos that show possible UFO sightings so people could see the footage for themselves. Uh... Quote, I will tell you unequivocally that through the observations, scientific methodologies that were applied, that these aircrafts, we'll call them aircrafts, are displaying characteristics that are not currently in the U.S. inventory nor in any foreign inventory we are aware of 
we have deliberately stayed away from going down this rabbit hole of who is behind the wheel and what are their intentions because a lot of people have a lot of feelings about that and are very emotional about that. I wanted to allow the data to speak for itself. And uh, so while all of that's playing out in the mainstream media, what is coast to coast? Those conspiracy wackos over at Coast to Coast, how are they playing up the story? Pentagon UFO program revelation puts spotlight on the phenomenon. The past weekend's bombshell revelations regarding the Pentagon's secret UFO research program has sparked a media frenzy surrounding the phenomenon which has produced some additional insights into the story. Uh, the remarkable report published by the New York Times has received extensive coverage from national news outlets and catapulted UFOs to the forefront of the public consciousness for the first time in quite a while. Uh, unlike many stories generated by this phenomenon, this particular tale seems to have taken hold in the zeitgeist thanks to the seriousness with which the U.S. government has been revealed to take UFOs. Uh, there you go. Then they talk about... Um, this 490 page report, uh, it is, um, uh, unknown whether or not the report will be made available to the public. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then, of course, what they go in to is this whole notion of the UFO disclosure movement, which the, the wackos, the UFO wackos, and uh, as I'll mention in a minute, I am a former UFO wacko, talking about the disclosure. Uh, we've been hearing about this shit going all the way back to the 1970s with close encounters of the, uh, was it first, second, or third kind? Anyway, uh, about how the powers that be, the New World Order, everyone from the U.S. government to the United Nations to Hollywood are grooming us for uh, the, the, the single biggest story in the history of humanity that space aliens are either already here, or if they're not here, they're going to be here any minute. Um, how the story unfolds from here remains to be seen, but there is hope in the UF disclosure community that the tremendous public interest in the latest Pentagon's admission can create momentum towards more revelations from the government, uh, but more cynical observers and seasoned UFO researchers are taking something of a wait-and-see approach, and some concerned conspiracy theorists are already crying foul and warning people that the threat aspect of the Pentagon's mission may be used to fabricate a hostile ET narrative should this truly be the start of some kind of UFO disclosure. Yes. Ultimately, it may take some time before we know if the Pentagon's admission was a watershed moment 
in the march towards the UFO disclosure or simply another maddening misstep leading us even further into the dark and uh, get all coast to coast hitting the nail on the head why I am no longer a, uh, a UFO space alien wacko. I'm not saying that I'm that I'm no longer. It's just that after being down this goddamn space alien rabbit hole for as many years as I was, it's just th there. It's kind of like being an eco Nazi. There's only so many ways that an eco Nazi can say we are so fucked. After I spent about, I spent about four years, and I was way down. I'm talking way down deep into the space alien uh, UFO rabbit hole uh, for years. Uh, and, and there's just so many of these goddamn stories like this over and over and over again, going back uh, minimally in this country to 1947, but going all the fucking way back into Ezekiel and his goddamn wheel. You know, show us the fucking proof. It's just, here we are in the goddamn New York Times in 2017, putting some grainy ass little video uh, that any third grader could have, could have photoshopped. Uh, <clears throat> you know... It's uh, as the old joke goes. It's time to put the goddamn space aliens landing on the White House lawn. For God's sake, we already have a space alien in the fucking Oval Office. Uh, you know, it's time to put up or shut up about this. But uh, as, as as I've had many rants about, uh, bring on the goddamn space aliens. My my eco Nazi version of, of this whole space alien rabbit hole as I've mentioned before if the goddamn space aliens ever get here uh, you better believe as uh, as who uh, that little guy that little shriveled up guy in the wheelchair uh, Hawking he, you know has been warning us that uh, if and when these guys do get get here uh, get, guess what uh, you're damn straight. They're going to be hostile towards uh, humans. Uh, I, I hope to fuck that these goddamn space aliens are some sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of eco-Nazi from outer space uh, stumbling onto the blue planet. It would take a fucking space alien uh, about three minutes to figure out what's wrong with this fucking planet that there's one way, if there's any chance to save this planet, there's a little problem on this planet that needs to be taken care of. <clears throat> it's called humans. <laughs> that if, if the space aliens give a flying fuck about planet Earth, and I can't imagine that they would, uh, the first thing they are going to do, if, if they do have any concern about the, about this planet and every single species of fellow Earthling that humans share the planet with, they're going to get rid of our fucking guilty asses. Bring on the goddamn space aliens. You know, it's just going to be like... A, you know, like like one of these wildlife managers looking at rats uh, on these islands, you know, where or, or these fucking rats have invaded uh, ecologically delicate islands and and just run rough shot over the whole fucking island, killing everything in their path. That's what we are, humans to this planet. Are, are like rats to some ecologically diverse island, and just like any any uh, human with any concern for our fellow Earthlings on one of these islands uh, being taken out by fucking rats, 
Uh, you know, hopefully these space aliens get it. We are the fucking rats that need to go. Bring on the goddamn space aliens. Uh, sweep us the fuck out of here. Uh, uh, that's about my only interest in this. So, either uh, this whole space alien story is, is, is a bunch of goddamn fucking wackos completely diluted out of their head, or this will be the single biggest story in the history of humanity when uh, when these guys show up. And uh, I say, come on, bring it on, welcome aboard, get the sweeping beginning, bring your big fucking broom off the mothership, and take care of this little problem down here. Hostile ETs. Yeah, it depends on uh, whether you're a human or any other goddamn uh, species on this planet. Um, but of course, the space aliens, they're not going to give a fuck uh, about us or any other Earthling. Uh, all they want is, is the goddamn goods. It's the, it's the same fucking reason that, that we're going uh, to the asteroid belt and to the moon and to Mars. Uh, it's, it's A, because we fucked up our own planet and we need a new planet to live. Uh, or B, we want the fucking resources. You, you think some space alien's gonna give a fuck about the overburden? Uh, they want the fucking goods. Anyway, with or without space aliens... We are so fucked. But, you know, good for the mainstream media sounding more and more like coast to coast. Good for the mainstream media science pages and, and the New York Times for sounding more and more like coast to coast every single day as this goddamn Twilight Zone episode called Living on Planet Earth in 2017 unfolds. And if any year in human history was ripe for an alien invasion, it would be 2018. Bring it on. And with that, i got to wrap up this wacky conspiracy roundup rant because I really think I'm hoping I'm going to pin down my tenant today to see if he wants to buy my little rental house in a Texas floodplain. Wish me luck on that one. Smoke them if you got them. Space aliens or no space aliens. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.